gracious and loving Father, Father of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the only true, wise, and living God. Dear Master God, here we are again, Heavenly Father. Yes, a few of your children, Father, coming before your throne of grace. Before we ask you for anything, Father God, but we want to thank you for everything. You've been so good to us. You allowed us to enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your court with praise. And we want to give you all the praise and all the glory because you're worthy to be praised. And Father God, as I stand behind this sacred desk, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you remove Charles and speak through me to your people that we may hear a word from heaven. And Father God, as we hear your word, let us take it out into this dying, wicked world and tell them about a living, risen Savior who died out on yonder cross just to save a rich like us. Father God, we thank you and we love you. This prayer I praise in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who does all things well, not something all things decently and in order. I ask you to bear with me today, <laughs> trying to get adjusted to these new glasses. <laughs> you get my age, you can't, you can't see like you used to see, amen? So I kind of got to figure out some of these words, amen? But we'll be looking at Genesis chapter 18. Reading from the King James Version. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mormon. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And said, My Lord. If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. And Abraham fast hastened unto the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the herd. And Abraham ran unto the herd, and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it unto a young man. And he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which were behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in age. And it ceased to be Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? 
Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed, but not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou did laugh. At 14 verse, is anything too hard for God? I want to talk to you from the topic today. What is it that God can't do for you? What is it that God can't do for you? Genesis 18, 14, it poses an important question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Well, my brothers and sisters, I will submit to you that the answer is no. God is omniscient, which means that he is all-knowing. God is omnipresent which means that he is everywhere at all time. God is omnipotent, which means that he is all-powerful. One writer does a good job, as I've heard, in describing how powerful God really is. In Genesis 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning, God. So where did God come from? He came from nowhere because there wasn't anywhere for him to come from. And coming from nowhere, he stood on nothing. And the reason he had to stand on nothing, there was nowhere for him to stand. And standing on nothing, he reached out to where there was nowhere to reach. And he caught something when there was nothing to catch and hung something on nothing. And told it to stay there. Standing on nothing. He took the hammer. Of his own will. And he struck the anvil. Of his omnipotence. And sparks flew. And he caught them on the tip of his finger. And flung them out into space. And bedecked the heaven. With the stars. Anybody here. Go pray with me. The reason nobody said anything, there wasn't anybody there to say anything. So God himself say, that's good. Think about that for a moment, my sister and brother. If God can create something from nothing, he can do anything. If God can create the entire universe in six days, there's no problem that you and I have that he can't help. When we comprehend the awesome power of God, this will encourage us when we pray. When we come to the realization that our Father owns it all and can do whatever he chooses, then we can go confidently and boldly before the throne and make our request known unto him. Centuries ago, God promised God promised Abraham and Sarah they would have a son through those whose offspring the world would be blessed. In Genesis 12 and 2, God said to Abraham, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. This was a great promise. But that was a major problem that Abraham and Sarah would quickly point out. As the old saying goes, neither one of them were spring chicken. <laughs> Furthermore, it was apparent to them by this time that Sarah was barren. But God made it clear that Sarah would give birth to the child of promise. And upon hearing this, Sarah laughed. After hearing this, God spoke to Abraham, and he asked him, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I think that is a question that each of us must, we must ask ourselves from time to time. The answer is obvious, no. But there are times we act like our problem is, uh, they just too big 
for God. Old Uncle Oscar took his first airplane ride knowing that he had been somewhat apprehensive about it. His friends were eager to hear how he went on the first opportunity. They asked him if he enjoyed the flight. Well, commented Uncle Oscar, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. But I tell you this, I never did put all my weight down. That's how many Christians, my brothers and sisters, take the promises we have received from God. They believe that God has the power to save them from their sin, deliver them from hell, and grant them eternal life. But they don't trust him to get them through the daily struggle. They never put all their weight down. But living that way, I must tell you, it reveals a lack of faith. This is why so many believers live lives that are consumed with doubt, fear, and uncertainty. God does not want his children to live this way. He wants to be active in our lives. He wants us to trust in him and, and turn to him for all of our needs, great or small. I hope that through this message you will be informed that you will be encouraged by the fact that there is nothing that your heavenly father cannot do. We all profess that we believe this. But sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we, too, we need to be reminded. Let's take some time today and consider the fact that there's nothing too hard for God. What is it? What is it that God can't do for you? Genesis 12, 15, and 17, and 18, it covers God promised to make Abraham the father of a great nation. The problem was that that their faith is revealed in Genesis chapter 18, verse 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, and they were well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. At this time, Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90. Humanly speaking, it was impossible for Sarah to bear a child. Abraham and Sarah both. They responded to God's promise the same way. They laughed. In response to their laughter, God himself asked the question, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Through his word, God has answered this question for us. And I won't leave you in suspense until the end of this message. The answer is no. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. But let's take a few moments and consider the fact that there's no promise too hard for the Lord to accomplish. What is it that God can't do for you? There are literally thousands of promises that God has given us in his word. There's no way to cover them all in one sermon. You can cover them all in a series of sermons. In fact, I don't think it would be possible to cover all the promises of God in a lifetime. But I do know this. Not one promise that he has made will go unfulfilled. There's no promise that the Lord has given us that is too hard for him to accomplish. Are y'all going to pray with me? That we can... We can't examine all of God's promises. I would like to consider just a few of them. Number one, the promise of God's presence. He said, I will never leave thee. That's Hebrews 13 and 5. The Lord said he would never leave or forsake us. There may be time when we feel that he is a million miles away. It is in those times that we must Remember his promises. We can rest assured that he is ever with us. 
We also have, number two, the presence and the promise of God protection. He said, I am thy shield. That's Genesis 15 and 1. No matter what we encounter, what problem, what sickness we encounter in this life, no matter what our enemy throws our way, God is our shield and he is our protection. We can trust him to care for us daily. And as Christians, we can also claim the promise of God's power. He said, I will strengthen thee. That's Isaiah 41 and 10. There are many times and many things in this life that we cannot handle on our own. But our God can empower and he can enable us to accomplish the impossible. Elijah, Elijah couldn't make fire and rain down from heaven, but he had access to the one who could make it happen. We serve that same God, and he is powerful today as he was back then. There's also the promise of God provision. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4 and 19. Whatever you need, God can and he will provide. But my brothers and sisters, I always remember that you are a child of the most high God. And he owns it all. David said in Psalm 35, 37 and 25, he said, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seeds begging bread. God has promised to provide for his children, and nothing is too hard for God. Just consider the promise of, of God plan. He tells us, he said, all things work together for good to them that love God. Oh, it's in the Bible. That's Romans 8 and 28. No matter what you may face in this life, God has a plan. There is a purpose for every storm, and there is a perfect for every struggle. And he has promised that everything we endure will work together for our good. But we must keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, our idea of good and God's are not always the same. But he knows what is best. Whatever you may be facing in your life at this moment, God has a plan and a purpose for it. And he has promised that it would work together for your good. I could go on and on, but I would sum it up by saying, there is no promise too hard for the Lord to accomplish. As we move on a little further, I would like to also see that there's no prayer too hard for the Lord to answer. What is it that God can't do for you? Humanly speaking, Abraham and Sarah conceiving a child in their old age was an impossible task. Isaac being born was a biological, biological impossibility. But it was nothing for, for, for the all-powerful God. God had promised Abraham that he would make him the father of a great nation. But time went on and Abraham and Sarah did not have a child. They faced a time of uncertainty and even frustration. Though they were faithful servants of God, they endured a season of difficulty and doubt. But through it all, God had a plan. In his time and in his way, God would answer their prayer. There may be problems in your life that you have dealt with for a long time. You may have been walking through a valley for many days. You may be in the midst of a storm. 
And it seems that there is no end in sight. You have prayed and you prayed. But the answer you are looking for has not yet arrived. It may seem that God is a million miles away. You may think that he is not there or that he just doesn't care about you. But let me remind you that God does not work in our time, but he is always on time. It is in those tough times that we are tempted to take matters into our own hands. Abraham and Sarah, they made that same mistake. They became impatient and decided to do things their way. They decided that Abraham would conceive a child with Sarah, handmade Hagar. This was not what God had in mind. Their impatience and taking matters into their own hands brought its own set of consequences. But my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to learn from their mistake. Don't be tempted to get ahead of God and do things your way. Remember that no prayer is too hard for God to answer. Just look to the many answered prayers that are recorded in his word. Moses. Moses prayed to God, and God parted the Red Sea. And the people of Israel were delivered and their enemies were killed. I wonder if Moses looked at those swine and Israelites and said, See, no prayer is too hard for the Lord. But let me draw your attention to Elijah and the showdown on Mark, Mount Carmel. Listen to his prayer. 1 Kings 18 and 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all things as thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart back again. Look at how God responded to his prayer, verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Those false prophets had cried and begged their God for hours, and he never showed up. But they learned in the end, there's no prayer that is too hard for the Lord to answer. Oh, Daniel, you remember old Daniel? He was thrown into the lion den because he prayed to God. The next day, the king went to that den of lion and said, Daniel, was your God able to rescue you from the lion? Daniel said, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they will have not harmed me. Nebuchadnezzar, he learned that no prayer is too hard for the Lord to answer. A man named Jairus, he came to Jesus and informed him that his precious little 12-year-old daughter, she was dead. Jesus went to where she was and raised her from the dead. Again, I say, there's no prayer that is too hard for the Lord to answer. One day, Jesus passed a blind man. That man cried out, and Jesus let me receive my sight. Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. And immediately he received his sight. There's no cure for blindness, but there's no cure, but there's no prayer. That is too hard for the Lord. Herod seized Peter and put him in prison. He intended to behead him 
after Easter. But the church gathered together and they prayed. <laughs> they prayed for Peter. And the Lord delivered him from that jail cell. And when Peter arrived at the prayer meeting that night, he had. Oh, Peter had to testify, Deke, but how great God is. I can hear old Peter say, Herod is powerful, but there's no prayer too hard for my God to answer. Paul and Silas, they were arrested and whipped with many stripes. They were put in a cell with their feet in the stocks and God watching their every move. But at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Acts 16, 25 say that suddenly <laughs> there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's hand was loose. If you could talk to Paul and Silas today, they would tell you there's no prayer too hard for the Lord to answer. I could share story after story from the Bible where God showed up and answered hard prayer. I can also testify on a personal level that there have been times in my own life where I have gone to the Lord with requests that seemed to be impossible. In those times, I am reminded of what Jesus said in Mark 10 and 27. He said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. I have gone boldly before the throne and made my request known. And in his time and in his way, God has worked miracles in my life. And I'm here to tell you today, there's no prayer too hard for the Lord to answer. The devil knows. The devil knows that there's power in prayer. That is why praying is such a struggle sometimes. Our great adversary will do all that he can to prevent God's people from praying. One writer said, Satan dread. Satan dread nothing but prayer. His one concern is to keep the saints from praying. He fears nothing from prowless studies, prowless work, prowless religion. He laughs at our toil. He mocks our wisdom, but he trembles. He trembles when we pray. It is so encouraging, my brothers and sisters, to be reminded that nothing is too hard for the Lord. There is no promise that is too hard for him to accomplish. There's no prayer that is too hard for him to answer. And finally, we see that there's no problem too hard for the Lord to solve. What is it? What is it that God can't do for you? In Genesis 15 and 2, and Abraham said, Lord God, what would thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not bind her, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bow shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. One of the most important elements of prayer, I must tell you, is faith. Abraham, Ham, and Sarah were facing some incredible odds. But they had faith in the Lord. Listen to verse 6 about Abraham. He say, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. 
Perhaps, my brothers and sisters, you are facing some incredible odds of your own. You have problems and circumstances that seem to be impossible to overcome. Maybe you have tried to solve your issues on your own. And you have only made things worse. But let me encourage you. Let me encourage you to turn to the Lord today. Trust in him. Remember that there's nothing too hard for him. Just take a moment and survey these scriptures. And remember all that the Lord has already done. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. He walked up to the tomb of a man that had been dead for four days. He simply cried, Lazarus, come forth. And that man walked out of his own grave. At the sound of his voice, the blind received their sight. The deaf were made to hear. The lame began to walk. Lepers were clean. Men possessed with demons were delivered. One night in the midst of a storm, his disciples thought they were going to die. Jesus walked up to the front of the ship and simply said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. There are just a few of the amazing miracles that our Lord Jesus has performed. And what he did back then, he can still do today. We serve a miracle working God, and nothing is too hard for him. Well, what about that promise that God made Abraham and Satan? You know the one that seemed so impossible that it caused them to laugh when they heard it? Just the 21 and 1 saying, the Lord visited Sarah, and he had said, and they heard it. And Sarah, and he had spoken for Sarah, conceived and bare Abraham his son in his old age at the same time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. What is it that God can't do for you? This shows us that the promise was not too hard for the Lord to accomplish. The prayer was not too hard for the Lord to answer. And the problem was not too hard for the Lord to solve. A little boy was playing in the sandbox, and I'm going to take a seat. He had with him his box of cars and trucks, his plastic pail and a shiny red plastic shovel. But in the process of creating roads and tunnels in the south sand, he discovered a large rock in the middle of the sandbox. The lad dug around the rock, managed to dislodge it from the dirt. With no little bit of stroke, he pushed and nudged the rocks across the sandbox by using his feet. He was a very small boy, and the rock was very large. But when the boy got the rock to the edge of the sandbox, however, he found that he couldn't roll it up and over the wall. But determined, the little boy pushed and he pushed and he pried. But every time he thought he had made some progress, the rock tipped and then fell back into the sandbox. The little boy grunted, struggled, pushed and so struggled. But this only reward was to have the rock roll back, smashing his little finger. Finally, he burst into tears of frustration. All this time, the boy's father watched from his living room window as the drum unfolded. But at the moment the tears fell, a large shadow fell across the boy in the sandbox. It was the boy's father. Gently, but firmly, he said, Son, why didn't you use all the strength that you had available? Defeated the boy, saw it. But but I did, Daddy. I did. I used all the strength that I had. No, son, corrected the father kindly. You didn't use all the strength that you had. You didn't ask me to help you. With that, the father reached down 
picked up the rock and removed it from the sandbox. I know many of you are facing some tough situations as we speak here today. But let me take a moment to remind you just who your father is. No matter what you're enduring right now, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Give it to him. Remember what Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 7. He said, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. If you don't know him, I would like the opportunity to introduce him. He's Mary's baby, God's only begotten son, my strong deliverer. He's the baker, the bread of life, food when I'm hungry. He's the one who supplies your every need. He is the doctor, the great physician in a sick room. He is the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. He's the chief cornerstone. He is the resurrection and the life, my way out of no way. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. He is the balm in Gilead. He is the baker. He is the one who supplies every need. His name is Jesus. He's the alpha and the maker, the beginning and the end. He is the way, the truth, and the, and the life. Do you know him? Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stay. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn, through the storm, through the night, lead me Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Amen. I hope there was something that was saved that would encourage us to go on just a little bit longer. Amen. If whatever is bothering us, give it to Jesus. Let him work it out. We can't do it. We think we can, but we can't do it. Just give it to Jesus and let him work it out. Amen? Amen.